Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm here again with Michael Jensen, aka Brave Jayhawk, where we're going to discuss uh, what happened in week 11 of Survivor Pools, and then uh, go on to week number 12. Just to guys to to sum up again, uh, where we got to uh, leading into this week again. Uh, my Survivor Pools ended a couple of weeks ago. I took down one back in week eight, um, and then the last one I was alive in, I busted two weeks ago. But we're continuing to press on because, um, number one, uh, hopefully, uh, Michael is still involved in some of his. We haven't checked last week. I have a feeling, though. And then uh, also, listen, shout out to all you guys that are putting some pretty good uh, conversations in the Discord channel. Um, that's 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 really what I want to see um, to, to keep this going for next year. Um, just the, the, the sharper the comments, the better the questions, the more likely we are to answer them. And uh, yeah, so uh, Mike, how did you do last week? And then uh, we'll start talking about this coming week. Uh, we went. Uh, we really couldn't do very much. Um, we don't. We did not have San Francisco available. Um, we did not have Philadelphia. Um, we had two Baltimore. We did have a Buffalo, but we weren't going to use that. Um, so we took two Baltimore and. Um, all I know about the game is I, I got out of my church obligations and it was three to three. Um, hey, just remind everybody, by the way, <laughs> about, about what, what you're in stone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so it, uh, we had uh, 17 left going into this week. Uh, we have two of the entries, standard single pick pool, with the exception being that if we end the, the, at the end of the regular season, if there's more than one person left, uh, play continues into the playoffs. Uh, in which if you did not use a team during the regular season, you can pick them twice in the playoffs. Otherwise, you can pick them one time. And my, real, my, partner, a, my partner and I are two-time co-champions of this pool. And we haven't, we haven't really talked too much about the playoff implications uh, of, of your picks. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about them this week. But um, there are a couple of people that are following us that are still live in some stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to continue on. So you took two Baltimore's, and how many of that is that down to now? Uh, Sixteen. We lost one on the New York Giants. That was it. That sucks. Okay. Well, you know, yes and no. Um, yes, you obviously want more people out, but um, five people took Buffalo. So to me, that's a win, and it, it's not just a win. For that week, but it's a win going forward for two reasons, um, the most of which makes Buffalo less available for week 14. And second of which, this week is, is we're going to use this as our reasoning for some of our picks going forward. The picks were extremely conservative. Um, five Buffalo picks should not have been taken. I, I understand you want to stay alive, but this pool, from any single player's perspective, it was going to take a minimum of three weeks to win the pool from this point forward, unless you go absolutely crazy. Um, so if you're going to be here in three or four weeks, you need to prepare for that. And five Buffalo picks was far, was far too many. So I think what we're going to do, I'm going to share my screen and and I'm going to go back and forth. I want to, I'm going to start with survivor grade and then pretty much the rest of the time we'll dive into your post on my discord yeah. and set your map together. So let's go through at least, you know, who the top EV play EV plays are this week. Mm -hmm. um, and as we kind of alluded to uh, in previous videos, as you get later in the season, you're going to see some of these like 1.30, 1.40, 1.2 EV spots for no other reason than, really nobody has these teams left. <laughs> yeah, so, so these, these, yeah. these, these high win percentage chance teams that are not owned are just going to show up like this. So um, you have Kansas city. Um, listen, if you have them available, they're a, a million percent favorite to win this week. Um, but again, depending on who, how many you got left and who people have there, there's, they're also going to be a hundred point favorite in 15 when they have no other competition. And, and maybe people will be uh, knocked out. So if you do have other options, except for Kansas City, I know this sucks to keep hearing this, to keep saying, now can I play them? Now can I play them? I get it, okay? But you always have to look at your options now compared to what they might be in the future. And yeah, if your next, next best thing after Kansas City is to go take, 
I don't know, the Jets or whatever. We'll talk about that, something else. But um, then may, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you should drop Kansas City on people, seeing as Jets might be popular. But again, it depends on where, where you're at, um, what pool you're in. So, yeah, I, I still would prefer, if you could, to save the Chiefs. Um, uh, let's let's take these all three of these together. Buffalo and Dallas. I, 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 think, okay. I think Kansas City is definitely in its own group. I, I'll go for it. You would have to be in an extremely unique situation to take Kansas city um, outside of knowing who your opponents are taking. Um, you really just can't take them. Uh, the lone exceptions being there's like five people left and the other four have Miami and no one else. Um, and then you have Kansas city. But e- even then, if I had Miami, I'd rather just take Miami with them. And if they lose, then you all tie because week 15 if you sort by the point spread, the next five teams after Kansas City, you're not going to have when, when you get to week 15. No one's going to have Philadelphia, Buffalo, Dallas, or San Francisco. Some people have San Francisco, but the other ones, no one's going to have. Kansas City is the hammer of all hammers in week 15. If there's if your pool is going to go to week 15, you have to save them. And well, if that, if that means dropping to a five-point favorite, you got to do it. Well, let's 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 cut to the chase then this week because the re- the real the real thing this week is is the Miami situation. Okay, that, that, yeah, that, that that's the that's the real pivot point because they are a billion a billion t- percent favorite. You, you're not going to use them in the future, although correct. Although uh, you could you could invent a reason if you can invent a reason to hold them to eighteen. I I don't know. Uh, um, I, I just don't do that. I was just yeah. talking to a friend. He called me. He's like, he's in a pool with like 40 left for like a hundred K and he has Buffalo available. Um, I, and only two people at Buffalo. So I said, listen, Mike, this is pretty simple. 14 is your best shot in the whole pool. You should take as much chalk as possible. As long as you could take as much chalk as possible, as long as it's, it's the largest favorite. And just realize your equity when you get there. And I said, if they were 85% picked, I would take Miami if I were him. It might be, you're, you might be giving something up, but when it's, when it's close, I'd rather wait and, you know, so I can realize that equity in 14. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a question everybody's going to have to answer if they have Miami available. Do you eat it and then just move on to the next week? Or do you try to, Try to get fancy and, and try to make a make a hero EV play. Now again, like according to the math, right? If you're if you're if you're in a pool with ten people left and you knew that nine of them were going to take Miami, you're supposed to not take them, right? Um, yeah. And and that's kind of the EV thing, you know. But but then you also have to think. Well, this this was kind of a poker concept back in the day. Um, it, didn't exactly stand the test of time, although I'm still not convinced that it was debunked completely. The idea was that if you were faced with an all-in decision um, at some point in the tournament, that mm-hmm. you first you would look and see if it was a good math decision to call. And then there was this idea that even if it was probably plus EV by a little bit to call, if you perceived that you had a skill edge for the rest of the tournament, it was probably better to just fold so that you could you, you could realize that 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 equity or that skill advantage later. Now the the, the obvious right. challenge to that is well, how far do you take that? I mean, like, what what type of EV should you give up in the name of in the name of of of, of, of a skill edge? And that that question was never exactly answered. But there's certainly something to be said for it. So like, if you have so, I guess what I would say is that making that in survivor terms. Depends on what type of an entry you have. Like if you have like a super strong entry, then for the rest of the for the rest of it, like if you saved Kansas City, if you've saved Buffalo and Dallas for 14 and stuff like that, then I can't think of a reason why you shouldn't just eat the Miami chalk and just be be done with it. However, like if you have like crap, if you've put paint yourself into a corner where you have just no leverage anywhere else, like in, in during the weeks. I would probably recommend you take your shot and don't play Miami this week. So for me, it just kind of depends on on the strength of your entry 
and the strength of everybody else's entry with respect to how you play Miami. How are you looking at Miami? What are you doing with it? Do you agree with any of that? Disagree with any of that? What do you think? I, I actually disagree with it. I, I, you know, the difference is, I this is not an aggressive statement. I'm still in, you're not. Um, and what I mean by that is I, I did quite a bit of mapping yesterday for our pool specifically. And to your point about waiting to realize your equity later, there's a great opportunity next week in our pool that's probably going to be available across most pools where two teams are going to consume a large percentage of the pick percentage in week 13, and they're not that heavily favorited. And the problem here is Miami's just, they're like 87% to win, and they're not going to be picked. Them in San Francisco, their pick percentage this week will be comparable to what the pick percentage for Cleveland and Tampa Bay will be next week with the difference being those teams have, are only six point favorite at each yep. and Miami is 13 and San Francisco is like nine. Um, so I would take Miami in almost any situation. And then all you have to do is look at what your opponents have. Now, if none of your opponents have used San Francisco, I mean, I'm sorry, if, mo if all your opponents that have Miami have used San Francisco, then you need to consider it. But it's pretty unlikely with how available San Francisco is uh, to your opponents. That's going to help break into that a little bit. I mean, someone's going to pick San Francisco over Miami. And just naturally, there's going to be people that have taken Miami in that week where, because in that it, the week that you took Miami, other than week one, was the week that New England lost. And the way in the strategy that week for myself was we need to pick Las Vegas and Miami so we can save whoever other teams we didn't want to take that week and fade, not really necessarily fade New England, but we just wanted to pick two teams and we, we, we didn't want to pick the one that was heavily uh, picked and they lost. So it worked out. All right. Um, so, 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 so let's, let's then proceed with the, with the, with the assertion. That if you have Miami available, just play it. We'll, 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 agree, yeah. we'll, we'll agree with that for now, which is perfect. So now we'll spend the rest of the time on what, what to do when you don't have Miami available. Yeah. So we already talked about Kansas City. Now let's look at the let's look at the next group, I guess, in terms of EV goes. So Buffalo and there's let's look at Buffalo and Dallas together, I guess, because they mm -hmm. they both have that that week 14 big. Um yeah. if you do have Buffalo and or Dallas available. Which one of those do you prefer and why? Great, great question. Um, great question. Yeah, I, I, th I think they're very, I think they're very similar plays. Um, uh, no, this is what's so fun about Survivor this week, uh, Eric, is that. You're, there's been several examples and here's another one where you have two teams and their best weeks line up with each other, uh, yeah. Buffalo for 12 and 14. Um, but then you have Dallas for 13 and Buffalo for uh, 15, 16. Um, I would prefer to have the team. I, I mean, I like Buffalo better for later. Uh, they're already less available across all pools. And well, that's the point. And the thing is, it's it's hard to like even get to fourteen and like not take them. Um, I guess it's more of a question is if you have both of them available, what you should do? Because I think if you only have one, you're not supposed to take. You're just not supposed to take them. I think you can only take Buffalo or Dallas if you have both of them. Um, if you only have one of them, I would prefer dropping. Um, but I would, I would. I, w I just would not want to take Buffalo uh, this week um, if you only have them. They're, they're just not just 14, but I, mean, I guess Dallas, though, in, in 13 is going to be a really uh, sick spot as well. Yep. I don't know. All right. So we'll call Buffalo and Dallas kind of a draw. Um, well, let's say you don't have. So we said if we if you if you had Kansas City, we'd want to save them. Buffalo, if you have da Buffalo or Dallas, it's probably close between the two. If you have Philly, let's look at Philly and San Francisco available. 
Like, how, how would you yeah. rate those two teams? I don't see – no, I don't have San Francisco available. So, I, I mean, I could think of what I would – how I'd feel if I had them. If it was a pool where my target week was 15, I would 100% take San Francisco this week, 100%. Unless I had Miami. I would always take Miami over San Francisco because I would just hate to get to week 16 and be on Tennessee with a large group, albeit heavily favorited when I can just have uh, San Francisco almost all alone. Um, Cause that's, what's going to end up happening here. Most people only have one or you know, a lot of people have like one or the other. There are some that have both, uh, but San Francisco is going to be really nice to have in your back pocket for 16. Um, but if you have them, I, 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 I think you just have to take them. Um, you, you could drop, uh, but this is where they're above that threshold for me. If they were, let's say seven point favorites, um, that would be enough for me to want to drop and save San Francisco. Um, looking at week 16 with, you know, backup option. Week 17, I mean, the Raiders are going to mail this thing in. Um, but at, at a nine and a half point favorite, I, I'd have a hard time not taking San Francisco if I had it myself. Um, all right. So again, it's just, it's just, I, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry, Philly. Philly's, oh man, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, Obviously, I don't have them. I mean, one person in my pool has them. Philly is so unavailable that it, it's almost not even worth, like, even, you know, talking about because it's such a high, an extreme hypothetical. And Circa, like, what, maybe three people have them left? I, I, I know two people at Baltimore left. They must be feeling good yeah. um, after getting through. I assume they got through. Maybe they didn't. Um Philly, I, I'd say uh, no. I wouldn't play Philly. I, I'd rather drop. I mean, they're they're only like a six and a half point favorite. I I would I would never play Philly this week if I had them. I mean, if you got if you got to this point, why would you want to play them when they're not when they're not? I mean, they're only a couple. Let me see. They're they're ten percent more likely to win roughly than like say Washington or the Jets. Maybe fifteen percent more. I, I'd rather I'd rather save them because. You, you can use them for a variety of weeks. I mean, week 14 would be fantastic if you don't have Buffalo or Dallas. Um, you'd be on a lone wolf pick, um, which is a, a good situation. Week 15, yeah, I would never play Philly here. It's actually their worst game the rest of the year outside of Dallas, looking so, at each game individually. Now, who is your favorite um, – and we'll, then we'll get back to your pool. Who is your favorite drop pick? Because I asked that. Because again, you know, whatever. If Vegas had won last week or two weeks ago, I would have been playing Cincinnati this past week to save Baltimore, and yep. then, and, and and put myself in a situation in twelve where I mean, I was I was resigned that I was just going to be gambling with it, it, in in week twelve that I was yep. going to be stubborn. I was not going to play Kansas City. I was not going to play Buffalo. I was not going to play that. You know, I was not going to play Dallas. I was just going to just save the whole the whole thing. Um, so I was, I was, I was in the market for a, for a reasonable, for a reasonable drop. And, and I get, I guess I'm just eyeballing it would be. We spent quite a bit of time on this yesterday. Which one do you think is the best? I mean, we have our opinion. We, we we came to, Jesse and I came to the consensus. They're all alone. That's the thing. Um, But they're not going to be, no one's playing these guys. I I, I would say. No, but but it's. Washington, Washington, the Jets, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's for, it's it's for later. And this is, this is why mapping is really important. You know, again. If you have a pool of like ten people left, it's right. it's it's not gonna it's probably not gonna matter. But um, if you're if you're you know if you're in a pool with like still like a hundred people left, you know if if you have picks where there's going to be a medium to large group on them, you know if you keep winning, you're going to travel along with a bunch of people, and you know you're going to get to week sixteen. And we were looking at Washington, the Jets, at least as of last night, yeah. the Wa- Washington, Seattle, the Jets had basically the same money line they're, they're all like minus 200 minus 195 um and when you when you work backwards um when you start crossing out the teams that nobody has you're gonna what you're gonna see is the seattle being picked heavily in week 14 by the people that do not act at current spreads yeah um if everything were to stick um so you you don't want to take seattle because if you get to week 17 yep, or 18, that, let's that, say – I have that highlighted right here, yeah. 
Yeah, so if you get to week 17 or 18 in your pool, you want Seattle because yeah. they'll – at current spreads, they're going to be hammered in week 14. Yeah. And week 17, they play the Jets. It's actually one of the best games that people will have available it, it is Seattle week 17. And week 18 could be a huge one um, because, uh, because they're, oh, the, the Rams. The Rams are terrible. Um, you know, like, so Seattle is a, is a save for sure. It's, it's weird saying that, but if your pool gets to the end of the season, yeah. Seattle is, pro- is probably one of the most important teams to have for the last two weeks. It, it's yeah. bizarre. It's, that is a bizarre thing to comprehend, but because how heavily they'll be picked in 14 and how strong their last two games are, you want Seattle. Uh, the Jets, uh, you know, similar, um, they're going to be picked – uh, it's, 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 I mean, the Jets you might want in 16, and they'll be picked a little bit in 15. And they play at Miami in week 18. So, you know, back pocket, Miami's just locked into something. Yeah. You know, that could be a really good play for the Jets, potentially, at Miami in week 18. Yeah. Washington just doesn't have much look in there. Um, that's the one we like. The, their close is not good. Um, of course it could change like, you know, Dallas isn't playing for anything, but you know, Cleveland is just not a good one for them in week 17 and at San Francisco in week 16 is terrible. So, um, we, we like Washington as the best team to drop to this week. Again, no one's going to pick any of these teams in your pool no, no. probably, but you want to pick the one that you're least likely to want to have later. And that's why you have to map, especially at this stage. And really, at the entire juncture of of, of any juncture of the of the ter- of the pool, because things do change. But you know, you want to have some logic and reasoning when you're deciding between two or three similar picks. I mean, I guess you could randomize it. We we it got to like it, it, this was close enough to where I said, Jesse, maybe we should just go on Twitter and put up a poll. And you know, it, it really it, that's how close it is. It really wouldn't make a difference. But he said. Uh, I'd rather make a decision so I can blame myself when I lose. And I, and I, and I like that touch. So I have your, 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 your grid up here. So remind me, so I'm not mistaken. These, the top two in the row are, are Correct. remaining. So I saw mm-hmm. that you, that you, that you slotted in Miami for this week. And, and in the other one, you, you're opting to, well, again, I don't know what you're actually doing, but your idea is to not drop this week and just to eat, buff, not eat Buffalo. I mean, no one else, not that many people play them, but uh, but to play Buffalo in twelve, uh, uh, you, you want to talk about either of these paths? Want to talk about either of these pools or any of these entries? I mean, what? Oh yeah, this was this was a fun one. Yesterday we actually talked on Telegram and or or text on Telegram rather than get, get, meet up in person, which is a, a different way to do it because we we were both working on it, and we saw this a couple weeks ago that uh, underneath this picture there are a lot of notes that I put that he had already. That he that he was telling me at not having seen written, me writ, written the same exact things. We saw week twelve as a really good potential drop week, but there's also another really good opportunity. No one else, no one may take Buffalo this week in this pool. Um, I, you know, it some wild things could happen, but I mean, I think the one person that can is the person that has Dallas and Buffalo. Um, but I mean, if, if I were them, I would eat the chalk on Miami and keep both of them. Um, his run out is absolutely incredible at Miami, Tampa Bay, Dallas, Buffalo, San Francisco. I mean, that's, that's better than our run out. Um, and our, and our entries are strong. So we really feel like no one's going to take Buffalo and it'd be really awesome. Not necessarily just to get through first game of the week, but we have to take Miami. And we're, we're to, and Miami's going to be, they might be picked by as many as 11 people in our pool. Um, but, we, you know, a really nice spot where you can get through on one team and possibly win the whole pool if some miracle happens. Um, but the other spot is to drop. And as of right now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop um, to Washington so that we can – play Buffalo in week 14 in one entry along with Dallas in week 14 in the other. Yeah. Um, and then move one of our Dallas's to week 13 
and then play Miami as well. I'm sorry, play Minnesota as well. Um, and this is why we wouldn't have really came to this if we didn't map out this picture for everyone. And again, I have no idea what people are going to do. But after last week, I'm very confident. Um, one, you know, one person took a non-big favorite, and they had to. They had already used everybody else. So no no one dropped. Everyone just, you know, more or less took the best team they had available. And for most people, that was okay. But mo- a few of them had a choice. And, you know, they're going to show me that they didn't choose to play aggressively. I'm going to – I feel comfortable that this is what week 12 is going to look like. And – if that's the case, week 13 might look like what this picture looks like. And this picture makes it very obvious what we're, what we're supposed to do. Um, and that's not take Cleveland at all in week 13 um, and to pick some three point favorite. Uh, you know, there, there's some, there's some, there's a chance that outside of one other person who does not have Cleveland or Tampa, that Cleveland or Tampa will be picked by every single person in the pool. Yep next week other than us and you know they're only six point favorites each we'll take yeah, and then, we'll but take then, one of the, then one of those people are going to do in 17 you have them slotted all in 17 to take Tampa. well i i more so put that there oh well they'll have the 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 teams above it they'll have either um the giants or seattle are okay. the best teams available that aren't the the ones you'd, you'd want because by then nobody has anybody at, at, at current spreads no right. one has the chi- no the chiefs or, or, or the eagles or um, or, or Buffalo or these other teams. So um, th- that was more just to illustrate this is who has this team. But, you know, three weeks ago, Tampa w- really wasn't on the radar for week 13. They were, you know, probably pick a and, na- and now they're a listed six-point favorite on DraftKings. And Cleveland, I think, you know, Tampa Bay six and a half, Cleveland six. You know, taking one Dallas at nine and pairing them with Buffalo is ve- would be a very strong – combo for us against all these Cleveland Tampa picks um, you know it might not work out but in order to have the opportunity for this let's call it a three-team parlay Cleveland and Tampa Bay loss and then one of our teams win that that brings the pool down to most likely less than three people um, and it's realistic it, it's a lot more realistic than hoping Miami loses in week 12 or San Francisco it, it's far more likely um, I didn't look it up, but I, I mean, there's probably, there might be a better chance that Cleveland and Tampa Bay both lose than Miami losing this week alone, um, all alone. I don't know if that's the case, but, um, in order to have that spot, we can't pick Buffalo this week. So unless something, unless we don't sleep right and we wake up after having a bad dream, we're we're, ta- we're we're gonna take we're not gonna take Buffalo tomorrow morning, and then we'll see how the rest of the next few days shape up. But as of right now, we w- we would pick Washington. But um, you know the Jets and uh, and Seattle are, are 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 very good options as well. It's just that yeah, we would just hate for this thing to go to week seventeen, and you know there'd be four people left, and we'd be the only and, and no one has Seattle left when all we had to do was pick someone else you know, to have Seattle available in 17. So that, that that's that's why we're not going to take Seattle. All right. So we'll we'll root for at least uh, a little bit of Miami. Um, but here, here's going to be the question. Like, if you take Miami and uh, and and X, are you going to even be rooting for Miami? Probably not, right? Isn't that weird? <laughs> not going to be watching the game, though, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, no, that's, worry that's, about uh, it. But, you know. Well, I mean, I'm not – I mean, since I won't be watching the games – it makes it a lot easier because when you're watching the games, you're exactly right. If Washington takes the lead, yeah, then I want Miami to lose. But then, it, then you know, it'll keep – because I'm pretty sure those teams play at the same time. I right. think they're both uh, the early slate on Sunday, Miami and Washington. Um, and then uh, the following week, I, I think they're both primetime games. The Cleveland and Tampa Bay games are both – I think they're both uh, – I think there's Sunday Monday night football um, football games, but the you know a lot, a, definitely some there's definitely merit though to taking Buffalo, I, and I I don't even know what the right I, I have no idea what the right play is. Um, I mean, what what would you do if if you knew no one was taking Buffalo in my spot? Would you take them? Because I I didn't even know I didn't even know the answer to that. I really don't. Um, 
No, I'd probably save them anyway. Okay. I'd probably save them. And then, just, but, but the thing is, we have Dallas available in, in both. You know, we we could just take like, we could take the other option was to go Buffalo, Cleveland, Dallas. I would take Dallas in thirteen. I I, I, you I would. would have. Yeah, I would. I would go draw. I would go X Dallas Buffalo rather than. Buffalo. Oh, I know, but 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 if if we were to go to go Buffalo, we would have to save Dallas for fourteen. Right. So. The, the the problem is we didn't have any other options. We don't have Tampa Bay. That's true. And yeah. the, uh, the 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 next best game, like the Giants in Atlanta, they're only one is a one point favorite and one's a one point dog. So like for that second entry of ours, the the second from the top, Let me go back. our only options of teams that are favorited in Week Thirteen are Minnesota, Dallas, and Cleveland. Those are the only teams we have. Uh, and, and, you know, we were trying to set up for Minnesota being a, a possible Week 13 pick, but the, the, they're somehow only a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, so if we went Buffalo, would, would, you, would you play Dallas in 13 and then drop in 14, or would you just take Minnesota? I, I guess you just – I guess we just have to take Cleveland. But, but, man, the problem is, look how many people – might take Cleveland. It's one of those, one of those weird week. things because if Cleveland's viable, then they're also going to be not viable. Do you know what I mean? Like if they're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they're viable, and, and that's and, that, and that's I think that was the main reason we decided to drop off of Buffalo because we realized we couldn't take Cleveland and we would have to take Dallas in thirteen unless we took unless we took uh, min, uh, two Minnesotas, which no way we do, or we'd have to play Minnesota and a one point favorite. And that just didn't uh, that didn't settle right because it just seems really it se- it didn't seem right to save both Dallas and save one Buffalo to this point and not have them not not play them in week fourteen and drop to somebody else it, that just didn't it didn't feel right so I, I, that's the reason I think that we're mainly dropping is we would have to take a one point favorite in week thirteen or we could not take. Dallas or Buffalo on both of our entries in 14. And, 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 and that's why you should always map because I'm, you know, what's going to end up happening is, you know, Washington, we're going to play Washington, you know, if, and if they lose the message board is going to be like, Oh, you fucking not, not on your site, but they're not, you fucking idiot could have took Buffalo and he took Washington instead. But if I took Buffalo, I'd be taking a one point or three point favorite next week anyway. So it's like, what's the, you know, like, what's the difference? Um, it's, it's in the end, I, I think I'm, I might be better off, not just, not just equity wise, but winning percentage wise for the, it, cause it's not about winning one game. If it's going to week 15, a hundred percent of the time with the teams that I'm taking, then it comes down to the three game winning streak, not an individual game, right. but the three games aggregate. That, that's that's all that matters. Not not one individual game. And if, if by if by sacrificing um, one game, dropping from I guess ten to four, I'm uh, I'm gaining by taking Dallas. I, I'm gaining six back right there. So it's really just the same thing. I'll be taking a nine point favorite instead of a six point favorite that everyone's going to take, or a three point favorite that you know, is just as likely to lose as the team I'm going to take in week 12. Um, so I, we're really excited about this. Uh, the, 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 uh, it gives it gives us a chance to win outright, um, which is exciting. Uh, but, the, you know, it, it, you got to also compare yourself to some of these other entries. And I want to make two other comments. So my friend that called me, um, he's going to, he'll end up taking Miami this week and only two people have Buffalo left in this pool out of 43. And I think he said six people have Dallas and Hang on, I, got, has, I got, I got, I got, I got to pause. This. Hey, sorry about that. Go ahead. So the thing I was talking about with my friend, Mike, uh, 43 left two have Buffalo. He's one of them. And I think he said six have, uh, Dallas. And I, and I, I asked him first, what are your plans for week 13? And he said, Cleveland. And I said, okay, well, just so you know, that, that 
it's, it's, it's a fine pick, but it, it could be a little chalky. But because of how big your favorite is in week 14, it's fine to take it. But you have to look at the Dallas entries. And so if you get through this week, look, look and map the Dallas entries. Right. If the Dallas entries do not have Tampa Bay, Philly, which they won't have, Baltimore, which they won't have, Buff, uh, Buffalo, which they wouldn't use, San Francisco. Basically, they don't have Tampa Bay, then, and, and they have Cleveland. You should strongly consider not taking Cleveland because if you, if you know that every Dallas entry has Cleveland available, there's a chance that they all take Cleveland. And if Cleveland were to lose and you got through on another team, you'd be sitting there in week 14 with one of maybe one, two, or three people with Buffalo or Dallas in week 14. And everybody else has to drop to like a four or five point favorite. And that's the advantage that you, that, that you want. So it would require, you know, taking like a three point favorite, but you should probably, I mean, if you knew everybody was taking Cleveland that had Dallas, you would do it. Um, so map and see if, if none of them have, or if, if none of them have Cleveland available, I mean, obviously take Cleveland and hope that whoever they take loses, but you have to map who the Dallas entries have and make your pick based on that. So you increase your, your equity in week 14 by making your Buffalo pick more unique um, and, 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 your, and your opponent's picks less available to Buffalo and Dallas. Okay. Um, so and, the la- and the last finished. one was Circa. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. There's, there's, there's some Circa entry I wanted to mention. I, I looked yeah. at it yesterday. And I, I just can't believe the run out. Uh, he, he had this entry took uh, Chicago and Washington. Mm-hmm. I assume they took Washington in week one and Chicago in week two. There was another time to take Washington. There was another time to take Washington too. But yeah, go but they've got uh, they got this unbelievable. They have Buffalo, Dallas, and Kansas City available, and San Francisco. It's uh, uh, so wow. Mad Mad Dog too. Well done. Uh, you are the runaway favorite. I don't even need to look at the other entries. You're the run- runaway favorite to win this thing. All right. So we're rooting for my – I know you don't care about rooting, but I want to root. So we're rooting for Miami, yeah. and I'll root for somebody else. Um, but we're not sure. I might not be yeah. rooting for Miami. You know, like I, well, I, 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 I – Well, listen, I'm, I know I'm going to root <laughs> for, for Miami for, for, for that entry. Um, yeah. And and uh, we'll uh, hopefully uh, – it'll be fun to see how next week's spreads kind of pan out and who's left and all that stuff. So uh, good luck this weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. To you too. Take it easy.